All right, so section 5.2 is about uh, mathematical induction. <clears throat> and the idea with mathematical induction, induction proofs, if you will, is the idea that you can show, okay, if it works for one, one particular value, you assume it works for the next, or you assume it works for another value, a, a, a random value, let's say, the kth term. If you can show that it works for the k plus oneth term, that means it works for all the rest of the terms. Okay, so the game is something like this. I will assume, or I will suspect, or I will state that uh, something is a true statement. So let me come up with one right here. So the sum, uh, where are we at here? The sum of i goes from 1 to n plus 1 of i times 2 to the i is equal to n times 2 to the n plus 2 plus 2 for all integers greater than or equal to 2. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so that's what we'd have to prove. We need to prove that this is a true story. Okay. So let's try this. So let's try, let's just try sticking in two, for instance. Okay, so, um, this looks goofy. Oh, I'm sorry, n greater than or equal to zero. That just looked, I knew that looked funny. Greater than or equal to zero. So let's try, let's try it for n equals two. Let's try it for n equals two just for fun, okay? So let's see what happens here. So you're gonna get, uh, well, you put in one. Oh, sorry. So if you were to do this, it'd be the sum of these guys. It'd be one times two to the one plus two times two to the two, which of course, as you know, is uh, this is four times two is eight, plus that is 10, cool. Let's see if that works over here. It was two times two to the four. A little screwy there. Oh, never mind. No, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. I forgot a term. I forgot a term, man. I forgot a term, okay? Um, so there's the second term and then the third term because you need to go n plus one. There you go. So that'd be uh, three times two to the three. Well, let's see if that works now. We got uh, a is 24 plus eight plus two is 24 Okay, let's see if that checks. So that would be two times two to the four plus two 16 times 2 is 32, plus 2 is 34. Check. All right, that works for that value, and that's great. Okay. So we're going to assume, we are going to assume that it works for the kth term. Assume it works for the kth term. Okay. If that were true, what would you get? Well, you would get you would get uh, k times 2 to the k plus 2 times 2. And you're like, well, okay, I guess. And, and so you'd work it on this other side over here. And on the other side, what would you end up with? Well, you end up with 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 2 times 2 to the 2 plus dot, 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 dot. Oops. Plus dot, 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 plus uh, k times 2 to the k. Okay. And so you assume that it's true for that guy. It works for any value of k. Well, then, here's what you do. You plug in k plus 1. Okay? So then you show that the procedure holds for k plus 1. And if you can show if it works for the next term, then it works for everybody. Because it doesn't matter where you start. It always works for the next one. It'll always work. Okay? So... Allow me to demonstrate what that means. Okay, so the k plus oneth term, and I'm actually gonna mess this up here, because remember you'd have to have k plus one, because you go you go to the n plus oneth term, so k plus one to the k plus one. There you go. Okay, now that's for the k. This is for the k term. Okay, what would the k plus oneth one look like? Well, it would look like this.
plus, now we know we'd have this one because that is the kth one, plus k plus 2, or if you prefer k plus 1 plus 1, times 2 to the k plus 2, or again, k plus 1 plus 1. Okay? If that's true, then it should match up like this over here. It should be k plus 1. 2 to the k plus 3, we'll call it for right now, times, or sorry, not times 2, plus 2, plus 2. Okay? Interesting. Interesting. So, um, what did we do different between these two guys? Okay, think about this. What did we do different? Okay, well, what we did is we added this piece here on. Are you with me? Okay? That's what we did. So when we look at this, what we're really saying is we're adding this piece here, which is on the right side. We're adding this to both the left and the right side. And so what we need to be able to show is that this, which was on the right side initially, plus whatever we add to it, can be rewritten as this guy. And we'll see if that actually works out. Okay, so we've got a plus two, so let's rearrange this and this, shall we? Okay. So we're going to have, um, I'll write it like this. It's going to be two, the k plus two, plus two. And then you're going to have, since you're adding them together, you're going to have two k's plus two. Okay. Now, what I would like to have in here is I'd like this to be 2k plus 1. I'd like that to be k plus 1, so I can factor out a 2. Okay. And then, look, this is all multiplication. This is 2 to the 1th. So what would happen if you rephrase this? It would be k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus... Now, I'm going to write this a little bit differently. Remember, I had 2 plus k plus 2 initially, yes right on the previous one right here and then what did you do you added one to that and because this is of the same form as the one above it you see but that everywhere there was a k there is now a k plus one okay because of that's true then it check it works for k plus one term, therefore, it works for everybody. Okay. Now, I'm going to write down the exact steps here so we can view them. As a matter of fact, I'm, I have a camera, so I might actually take a camera picture of it. That might be easier. Uh, camera. Cool. So, here are your steps for you, right? Here, there we go. Oh, yes, nice. Okay. Oops. Yeah, look at those feet, man. They look cool. All right. So here they are. So the consider statement. So for n, blah, 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 p of n is true. Okay, cool. So the basic step is show that P of A is true. In other words, show that it works for the first term. Okay. And the inductive step is show that for all integers K bigger than A, if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. So we're going to suppose P of K is true. And, and whether any K is any particular arbitrary value bigger than or equal to A. So in our case, we started with K equals, uh, or N equals uh, 1. With n equals one, and we show that it worked for that one, so it doesn't really matter. The fact that we then we assume it works for k, and you're like, well, okay, well that's cool. And then what? Well, if it works for k, then I show it works for k plus one. Then it has to work for two, for three, for four, for five, and so on. Okay, that's a pretty straightforward process, um, and it really a lot. When I was a kid, I remember the first time I ever learned that it it felt like I was just jumping through hoops. I felt like someone told me what the answer was, and then I just kind of had like do some monkeying around to make it work. So I say that to say that uh, when you do mathematical induction, 
it's not like deduction, like where you walk along your, um, you know, you're the old uh, elementary, my dear Watson. You know, you get your little hat on there and you get your little magnifier. That's deduction, you know. Oh, there's a trail of blood. I see. Yes. Mm, that's quite, mm-hmm. Little, little pipe there. Not deduction. Mm -mm. You cannot prove something that you don't know using this. In other words, you have to have a, a value that has been supposed to be true, or you can show that it works for quite a few things. Like uh, You can show that it works up through whatever. If you want to know that it hold all the way up, then you can use mathematical induction to prove that. But it's not a deductive proof. <laughs> okay, so for instance, we can show for all integers bigger than or equal to zero, one plus two plus two squared plus dot 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 uh, plus two to the n is equal to two to the n plus one minus one. Okay? All right, cool. So let's start off with uh, let's start off with zero, shall we? So if you start off with zero, well let's see, what do you get? Alright, so if n equals zero, then uh, you get two to the two to the for two to the zero is one. Two to the zero plus one is one, so two, two minus one is one. Check, it works for the first term. So we are gonna assume that it works for the kth term. This is assumed to be true. So what would happen if we went to the k plus one-th term? Well, the k plus one-th this is the case. The k plus one-th term would look like this. Plus a 2 to the k plus 1, right? And what would that look like on this side? Well, it would be what I had previously. Plus 2 to the k plus 1. More. Okay? Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. Now remember this, I have to be able to repackage and make it look like this. You see, I have to repackage it and make it look like that. But instead of looking like this, it needs to look like this. In other words, I will have replaced the K with a K plus one. So let's see what happens. You're like, I'm not sure this is going to work, Jay. Mm, just hold your horses. I got you. I got you. We got this. All right, check it out. There's two of these guys. In other words, we could rewrite this as two times. <coughs> right? And of course, this is really that, right? Which means then you could join them like that. But I don't want it like that. I would rather have it written like this. And because it's written like this, boom, boom, boom. It works for everybody. Therefore, it has been shown. Okay. Um, now, you may recall that I showed you that, uh, or you may not. I'm thinking when this happened. I'm recording all these videos ahead of time. No idea. I showed you the arithmetic sum the other day. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n is equal. By the way, that's the sum. i goes from 1 to n. It's the same thing as saying this. Is equal to n. I'm sorry, is equal to, I'm sorry, is equal to 1. T was equal to t1 plus, which in this case would be 1, plus the nth term. Times n divided by 2. It just feels dirty. But that's right. Right. And in general, if you have a sequence like this, if it was like 2i plus 1 or something, i goes from 1 to 4 or whatever, this formula in general is t1 plus tn divided by 2 times n. That's that formula, and I could prove that one as well. Um, and I think I will in a minute. But here's the deal. 
Let's see if this is true. Let's see if we can prove that it's true. What happens when n equals 1? Or i equals 1? Well, you get 1. What happens when you get 1 on this side? Well, you're going to get this is not to the n. This is times n. So it be 1 plus 1 is 2. Divide by 2 is 1. Times 1 is 1. Check. Uh, neighbor down this. Ne next door neighbor's got the... Uh, good grief. They got the... Uh, Lawn maintenance guy over today. Ah, drive me nuts. So we assume that it works for the kth term. So the kth term would look like this. Okay. Cool. Then the k plus 1... would look like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 oh I'm sorry this is k dot 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 plus k plus k plus 1 because I went one more term and so that will be 1 plus k over 2 times k plus k plus 1 okay, in other words whatever I added to this side, I'm going to add to this side now I'm going to take this here and I'm going to massage it until it looks like this thing up here okay so let's see if that's going to work. Uh, let's see. I feel like I probably ought to have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply this. That's going to be k plus k squared over 2. And I'm going to put this over 2. So it's going to be 2 times that. So it's going to be 2k plus 2 over 2. And then I'm going to combine some like terms and see what happens here. Okay, uh, wow, let's see what we got there. I feel like we know what we need to have. This inside of there needs to be 1 plus k plus 1, a.k.a. k plus 2, over 2, times k plus 1, right? That's what it needs to look like. Wait a minute. That is what this factor is like. This factor is k plus 2, k plus 1, and then one of them over 2 and one of them over 1. Ta-da! Therefore, it works for everybody. Okay? It is that easy, my friend. Mathematical induction. Almost fun. Hey, what about the sum of the i squareds? Nice. <laughs> I feel like I wrote this one down for you before, but I'm going to go ahead and prove it again just because it's a good time. Uh, <clears throat> oh, where is it? It's n, n plus 1, n plus 2. Oh, come on. Some... Mm. Uh, sum of squares formula. It's n n plus one. It's I got uh, hell on. It's gonna be n n plus one two n plus one over six, isn't it? Or is it over three? Come on, Jay. You can do this off the top of your head. Come on. Uh, come on. Just give me the formula. Where is the dumb formula? At? There it is. Over six. Oh my goodness! I know what I'm talking about. So we need to prove that this is true. So. Uh, this is for n bigger than or equal to uh, well, 0 should be, I think. Okay. Well, bigger than 1, I think it's bigger than 1. I think it's bigger than 1. Well, yeah, it's bigger than or equal to 1, of course, because, uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. This would be 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. Divided by 6 is 1. Yay! So 1 equals 1. Check. It works for the first one. All right. Let's check it for... No, it actually works for 0, too. Yeah, because I was thinking... I forgot about the 0. The 0 times 0. Or 0 times whatever 0 divided by 6 is 0. So, but I think it works... I think they typically say it's from any bigger than or equal to 1. But it doesn't matter. It works for both of them. This problem I'm just making up is not in the book. Okay? So here we have this. Okay? So let's look at that. What does that mean? Okay? Well, it would be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus dot 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 plus n squared is equal to this, 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 over this, okay? Now, again, if you just assume, we already showed it works for that guy. If you assume it works for k, it is literally this easy. 
I always thought that was annoying, but it has to, you have to show if it works for K, then if I show that it works for K plus one, then I've showed it works for everybody. Okay, so we assume true. Okay, then let's put in K plus one. So we're going to start with what we had here. And we're going to add that to it. So we have this side over here. And we do that. Now we need to take this guy right here. And we need to massage it until it looks like this, except where there's a K, there's going to be a K plus 1. So it's going to be K plus 1 times k plus 2. This is going to end up being 2k plus 3 in a minute. Okay, let's see if we can make that happen. Again, we're replacing k's with k plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that top out because it's going to help us in a minute. It's 2k squared, so it's going to be 2k cubed. You get plus 3k, so plus 3k squared, and then plus 1, so plus k. That's all over 6. We know that this thing here is going to be k squared plus 2k plus 1. If I'm going to put that over the uh, 6, it's going to end up being plus 6k squared plus 12k plus 6 all over 6. Which then comes down to this, 2k cubed plus 9k squared plus 13k plus, no, yeah, 13k, yeah, exactly, plus uh, 6. Nice over six okay so then the only question is we know it has to factor like this we know it has to factor like this no 2k yeah 2n plus 1 yeah, yeah. yeah that's how it has to factor let's see if that's true okay now i'm not feeling very I'm not feeling very peppy in terms of doing some uh, some arithmetic. I, mean, I love it. Look, I love algebra more than the next person, but I'm not feeling it today. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not feeling it. So 2x cubed plus 9x squared uh, plus 13x plus 6 divide by... Uh, I'm just going to divide by k x plus 1. That works for you, okay? And I get that thing right there. And then you're like, well, that's interesting. I wonder what that, if you divided that by K, or X plus 2. Well, now, no way. So what I've done is I've just showed that this right here on top factors just like this. And since it does, bam, 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 it is shown. It has been proven that it works for everybody. Okay, it's huge. Mathematical induction is a big, big big deal okay <clears throat> okay i want to do one of the i want to do an uglier one if i can find one what is an ugly one ugly yeah it's not that ugly oh yeah. Nah, I guess that's enough hard ones for today, I guess. They're not oh actually that was problem number ten. Yeah, look at that. I found it. I didn't even realize that was in there. Cool. Um yeah, so I think that's about as ugly as they're gonna get. It's not too bad. Okay. Now, the other day you may recall that I showed you the well actually I do want oh, there's one more thing I want to do. I want you to show me that the sum of um, three times two to the x, uh, uh, well, two to the i, sorry. i goes from one to six. I want you to show me that that is equal to six times the two to the
no, 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 Mm. 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 Let me think about that. I'm making one up off that way. Okay, so we want to show that the sum of this guy is equal to T1, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Okay? So again, let's start off with 1. So if you put a 1 in there, you're going to get 1 minus 1 is 0. R to the 0 is what? R to the zero. Oh, and R has to be positive. How about that? Okay. Um, R to the 0 is 1 times this guy is T1. And so for the first one, it would just be the first term. Now think about what that's going to be. The second term is going to be T1 times R. The next term is going to be t1 times r to the second, and so on and so on and so forth, yes? And then so the kth term, remember this is the first, second, third, fourth term. Pay attention to the exponents up there. So the kth term is t1 r to the k minus 1, okay? And so we're going to assume that that's true, and so that would be t1 1 minus r r to the k over 1 minus r. Okay. Boy, I hope I don't screw this up. All right. This might be kind of fun. It'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. Okay, so. Um, okay. And so, let's do this. So, we're going to assume that this one is true. Let's talk about the k plus 1th term. Again, that's the k plus 1th term. So over here, we had this. And we're going to add this. Okay, that's t1 right there. You with me? Okay, now let's talk about what this has to look like when we're finished here in a minute. In a minute, this has to look like t1, 1 minus r to the k plus 1 over 1 minus r. Okay. So the first thing that comes to my mind is I want to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 1 minus r top and bottom. And let's see what happens there. So you're going to end up with t, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute this guy out. So t1 minus t1 r to the k plus t1 r to the k minus t1 r to the k. Now hang on. Taking r to the k times r. That's r to the k plus 1 over 1 minus r. And before you're like, oh my gosh, J is an algebraic god. Just chillax, yo. I know what the picture has to look like. When I'm done in a minute, it has to look like this. This is not rocket surgery, friends. It, that is what it has to look like. So I know where I'm going. It makes it easier to get there. Um, it, it's not building a puzzle with 80 million pieces without looking at the cover we're trying to build. Okay. You're looking at the freaking cover. You're watching it the whole time. And it's something easy like, I don't know. But it's not a whole field of freaking daisies or something. It's it's pretty straightforward. I know exactly where I'm going. Those guys cancel out. Look what I get. Oh, my. What do they have in common? Check it out. They got a T1 in common. That leaves this. No way. Shut up. There it is, friends, and I've just proved that it works. So you may recall this is the sum of the n terms of a geometric series. Okay, I wrote that down in the last video. This is the sum of an in this is the infinite sum. The infinite sum, whoopsie daisy, the infinite sum where r is less than one and greater than zero. That is, it will converge at some point. This is an infinite geometric. And this is the sum of a arithmetic, which we looked at kind of earlier as well, although I started with one both times on that guy. Okay. So, yeah, 
So you're going to be given some questions, and I think I did a couple last time. I'm going to kind of run through a couple more here just for fun. 7 plus 16 plus 25 plus dot, 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 plus oh, um, da, da, 88 is equal to what? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, what am I adding here? We're adding 9. We're adding 9. We're adding 9. So it's 9. So it's going to be, when you look at it over here, Okay, well, that's something to think about if you're going to make an equation. If you're going to make a sequence for this, it'd be uh, 7 plus 9 and then uh, n minus 1. That would tell you the nth term, yes? And that's going to be important. We're going to need that in a jiffy. But it's going to be 7 plus 88 times something over 2. What the something is is the how many n's you have. So 88 is equal to 7 plus 9 times n minus 1. 81 is equal to 9 times n minus 1. That means 9 is equal to n minus 1, so n is equal to 10. So this is 95. Well, it's actually 950 divided by 2, which is 475, I think. Okay? Done. If you wanted to add this guy up, You want to add that up quickly. You notice we're timesing by three each time. So if you multiply by three each time, that to give you an equation like this, t sub n would be this, like that. Okay. Pretty straightforward. The sum of the nth terms. I don't, I don't know n. That's going to be an issue in a minute. I'll figure it out in a minute when I get there. Okay. So let's look at that. What is what is this problem? I don't know. 486 is equal to 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. 243 is equal to 3 to the n minus 1. Take the log of both sides. See, n minus 1 log 3 log 243. I don't know what L lin looks like. There it is. Divide by L and a 3. And that should be 5, I think, right? Let's find out. No, not that, you dummy. Oh, for the low. Oh, not five, you dummy. This is three. Five. Perfect. Five is n minus one. That means n is equal to six. So what I'm doing is I'm at the first six terms. And that's my answer right there. So. It's going to be 2 times parentheses 1 minus 3 to the 6 divided by negative. Eight thousand and eight. Is that what I did right? I spelled funny. Oh, it's tw not 22, you goober. Sorry. About 728. That makes me happier. So that's what chapter two is going to be primarily about is, is uh, looking at um, looking at doing some inductive proofs, showing how things work. And then you're going to be given, like I already showed them to you last time, uh, the sum of an infinite geometric series, the sum of a geometric series, the sum of arithmetic series, um, the sum of, a, uh, sum of squares, sum of, uh, sum of just sum of integers. All that stuff I gave you last time, because that kind of came up last time as well. I'm going to be doing some of those and doing some proofs. That is section 5.2.